Hi friends, welcome back to our Fundamentals of Instrumentation series of videos. Today we shall discuss about the order of the instruments. Now the order of the instrument is basically the, the power of the generalized measurement uh, system. What is the order? It is the, if there is no power to it, we call it as a zero order. And if it is one first order, second order sort of things. Now let's understand uh, for a typical measurement system operation, we have input signal F of T and initial condition Y of, now, y of zero, initial conditions, then output signal is Y of T. This is a typical uh, measurement system. We'll be uh, considering to design a, a generalized measurement uh, system and to derive the governing equation of it. Then the measurement systems are broadly modeled as depending on the power of the differential equation, a zero order, first order, and second order instruments. Now the zero order instruments, if you see, this model is represented by A naught Y of T is equal to B naught X of T. So Y of T by X of T is equal to B naught by A naught. That's what is the static sensitivity. Right, so output by input, B naught, Y of T by X of T is equal to B naught by A naught. That we normally take it as the static sensitivity, change in output by change in input. So this behavior is characterized by its static sensitivity K. So in such case, it is directly, the output is directly proportional to the input and remains constant regardless of the input frequency. In zero order systems, the measurement systems respond to an input instantaneously proportional to the K. It's like, you know, if you have just resistance in the circuit, just an amplifier, just a, um, you know, gain of the system. So the output is proportional to the gain constant. Okay, so that's exactly what we understand. So all those instruments um, which have this particular relationship, where we normally uh, consider them as zero order systems. So if you see the example potentiometer, where the uh, there is a direct relationship between output and input, then liquid in glass thermometer, transducer, typical transducer, and all the odd circuits which have just the resistance. All these are the zero order uh, systems examples. And when we come to the first order systems, the first order system is a measurement system that cannot respond to a change in input instantly or instantaneously because there is a, a, a time lag because of RC, because of resistance and because of capacitance, okay? So the typical equation for E is tau dy by dt is equal to y of t is equal to k by x. So if you see, uh, here, if this is a D operator, if you take, um, you know, Y of T, if you take common, this will become one plus tau D, capital D. So one plus tau D by by DT, D by DT of the Y signal. So y, y of T by X of T is equal to K by one plus tau D. That will be the governing equation for the first order equation because it's the first order derivative. We normally consider it as the first order equation. Now this is for the step input. Okay, so uh, from this at zero, we are giving directly the one step and from then onwards, it is constant. So it's like, you know, you are taking a thermocouple and directly immersing it in a water bath of, uh, let's say 100 degrees centigrade or an oil bath of 100 degrees centigrade. So in this case, this will be 100, this unit will be 100. And from here, you are directly subjecting the instrument. This is the input that you are giving. Suddenly you are inputting. That's the reason from then onwards, it is constant at 100 degrees centigrade because the thermometer is inside in, in, immersed in that. So this is a typical example of a step input. So if you see, you know, the um, solution of this equation, Y of T is equal to C into E power minus T by tau plus Ka. So C into E power minus T by tau is the transient response and Ka is the steady state uh, response where T is the time and tau is the time constant. Time constant is the time required for the system to reach the steady state value, or 63% of the steady state value. We'll understand this here. So step response, this is the equation for this Y of T minus Ka by Y naught minus Ka. So the EM, uh, the dynamic error, it actually error fraction is E power minus T by tau, okay. So when this is the input, step input from here, the output slowly 
responds like this and reaches the input after a certain time. And that is nothing but T by tau. So when uh, time constant equals five, five time constants, five seconds, where T by T is equal to one, in that case, it would have reached the steady state value. Okay, so we uh, normally uh, take this as time constant as the time required, one time constant here. Is time required to reach the, for the output to reach the 63.2% of the input value. That's exactly what we normally call it as time constant. And then if you see here, uh, EM is error fraction, you see, uh, 0 0.368, 63.2, whatever we are taking. And that is the decaying function, is what we normally call it as the error function, where slope is equal to minus one by t. Now tau is called the time constant because as we have seen, it takes for the measurement system to respond to 63.2% of the input signal. Then first order system, we have a frequency response. So frequency response, since the input is represented by the x of t is equal to a sine omega t, when where tau dy by dt plus y is equal to ka sine omega t. So the complete solution for this is the amplitude steady state response, and this is the phase shift. So amplitude steady state response is ka by one plus omega t square, square root of one plus t. And uh, phi omega is equal to minus tan inverse of omega t, okay? So this is the amplitude response and this is the phase shift. So you have an amplitude lag here when you are giving a steady state response and when you are studying this, and this is the time lag because this is reaching peak here and the output is reaching peak here. So the solid line is the input, the dotted line is the output, you will see. And it is always lagging in phase, lagging in time, okay? And uh, th this is the amplitude lag between A B. A is the input, B is the output. And uh, this small thing is normally what we call it as a phase lag of the signal. This is for a sinusoidal uh, periodic input. We normally call it as a sinusoidal input. The, this is how the output signal lags the input signal. So it lags in amplitude, it lags in time, it lags in phase. So if you see the other thing, the ratio of the output signal amplitude to the input signal amplitude is called the magnitude ratio, m of omega. Okay, one by one plus omega tau whole square under square root. And the phase angle is phi omega is equal to minus tan inverse of omega t. We will see this typical thing when we were understanding the frequency response of Bode plots. Okay, so here the dynamic error is equal to m of omega minus one, which is a measure of an ability of a system to adequately reconstruct the amplitude of the input for a particular frequency. So this is exactly what we call it as a dynamic error from this to this part. So it's a small example where we have a first order instrument is to measure signals with frequency content up to 100 hertz with an accuracy of 5%. What is the maximum allowable time constant and what will be the phase shift at 50 and 100 hertz. So here we can calculate the dynamic error is equal to with this thing. So we have a uh, angular frequency uh, and then time constant. Okay, and we have to find out the time constant here in this. Okay, so from the condition is less than 5%, 0 0.95 is less than or equal to one by omega square, which is less than 1.05. So if we equate this, we get omega t between zero and 0.33. So, and because of this tau, we will get as 0.52 microseconds. And the phase shift at 50 and 100 hertz can be found from phi of tan inverse of omega tau. Okay, then at 50, it gives 9.33 degrees. And at 100 hertz, it gives minus 18.19 degrees. So you can calculate basically the frequency phase shift. And then we can also calculate the time constant and the dynamic error with this formula, okay? So once we know the frequency, once we know the time constant, we can also calculate the dynamic error, or once we have the dynamic error is given, we can always calculate the time constant from this relation. 
So the examples of five first order systems are thermal systems, all thermocouple, temperature measurement systems, digital filter, an analog filter, and capacitance, and all the circuits which are involving just RC alone, because RC stands for time constant. So all these are instruments are categorized as first order systems. Then the second order system is again a, a second order derivative of the equation. We have A2 d square y by dt square plus A1 dy by dt plus A0 is equal to B0 x. Okay, so the governing equation is equal to k x i of t is equal to one by omega in square. Now, if we take y of t common, we will get one by omega in square capital d square if you take d as the d operator. So um, d, d square by omega n square plus two zeta omega n by d plus one is equal to k. So if y of t by x of t is equal to k by one plus omega n square d square plus two zeta omega n d plus one. So that will be the uh, uh, you know transfer function of the system where static sensitivity is the b naught by a naught and then in this equation, and the zeta is the damping ratio, uh, a1 by two square root of a naught a2, and omega n, the natural frequency, is square root of a naught by a2, the natural angular frequency. So once we know the um, static sensitivity, damping ratio, and the natural angular frequency, we can always find out the, uh, the basic sensitivity of the system. So the, if we take a simple example, the solution to the second order differential equation, one by omega n square d square plus two zeta by omega n d plus one is equal to zero. This quadratic equation has two roots, okay? Minus, if we solve this equation, we get minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega n square root of zeta square minus one. So depending on the value of zeta, three forms of complementary solutions are possible over damped system where zeta is greater than one, critically damped system where zeta is equal to one, and under damped system where zeta is less than one. Now we will see graphically you know, for a step input here for the same equation, uh, initial conditions y is equal to zero or t is equal to zero, and dy by dt is equal to zero or t is equal to zero. So for a over damped system, this will be the equation, critically damped system, under damped system. So over damped means the damping, the, the uh, oscillations are absorbed heavily. Under damped means like critically damped, they just match, but this condition do not occur. Most of the practical cases, we get only the under damped systems. So if you understand this, uh, you have the under damped systems, a small rise in 90% uh, input value. Then you have 10% of steady state value, Ka, and then over damped system, zeta is greater than one large rise time. This is for zeta is equal to zero, zeta is equal to 0.25, zeta is equal to 0.5. So these are all under damped system, these three. Okay, and they, there is a transient response and ultimately they go on settling down into the thing. So zeta is equal to zero, you know, it, it will be a continuously where there is no damping at all. Then zeta is 0 0.25, 0 0.5. They are coming near to the uh, Ka value and getting stabilized, reaching the steady state value. Whereas here, if zeta is equal to one, it will take longer time for it to reach the steady state value. Whereas two, if it is two, it will take a much more time uh, for reaching the steady state value. So the desired condition is always to have a um, damping ratio around 0 0.7, 0 0.6 to 0.7 where it will just shoot up and then settle down fast uh, for, for a steady state response. So that's about the step response of a second order system. When we are giving a step input of this Ka standard, like as we said, take an instrument and suddenly subject it to a, a fixed thing and keep the input constant. And then the output will be going on responding like this for different values of damping ratios. So damping is nothing but you know absorption of oscillations, right? That's exactly what we call. So you will see here the settling time. First it will go here, and then it will come back, and then it will after some time it will reach a steady state value. This is what we call it as a transient um, region, transient response, which we also call it as a settling time. 
settling time for the signal. Okay, so the second order system examples, if you see all the galvanometers and accelerometers where we have dashboards and lot of thing, diaphragm type pressure transducers and YouTube manometer and all the circuits where we have inductance along with resistance and uh, capacitance, we consider it as a second order system. Uh, systems. Okay, so this is all about the order of the instruments. Uh, hope it is clear and thank you very much.